Let's talk a little bit about the BVA 20N, its new things that has uh, been installed in that from the factory. Two things that really separate the BVA 20 from the, the 15 uh, is that this particular system has a two-speed type blowing device. So we are capable of upgrading and downgrading Y1, Y2, wintertime, summertime uh, scenarios. So we have the capability of, again, enhance that comfort uh, in, a, in a situation where we don't need all of that air coming out of the ductwork, uh, Y1, Y2. So our thermostat would have to represent that particular uh, parameters uh, if you wanted those uh, um, dialed in controls and settings and stuff. So uh, again, X13 style motor, but now we get to pick Y1, Y2. The other thing that's really nice about this, this uh, particular unit is that if your controller has the dehumidification type uh, scenario uh, parameter on it. Uh, you can choose that and when I hit that uh, particular percentage that you have chosen, my system will downgrade the fan automatically in its lowest fan setting and bring on the condensing unit and, it's, and basically it will recognize what's going on on the inside and give you that dehumidification, that comfort level that you need uh, at that point in time. Let's talk a little bit about something that um, uh, we have been combating for a very long time with electric fired heat pumps. On a normal electric fired heat pump, your thermostat would, would tell you that you needed some heat and you would get a signal. When that signal hit the board, that fan came on. The fan would bring in return air, supply air would be coming out of the vent and that particular air would be in the wintertime non-tempered. So we're not gonna have any temperature coming out of that and people are gonna feel cold, what our industry called cold blow. We do not do that anymore with this air handler. This particular wire is tied to the board, tied to a sensor, and so what we're looking at here is when my heat pump comes on through the controller, my fan motor does not come on until it recognizes a coil temperature basically about 95 degrees. And what we're looking at here is keeping that fan off in that, that cold blow situation. So really this, this, uh, this item is called anti-cold blow. And this particular coil and air handler um, has one built into it. Pretty neat device for the Bosch VVA 20 uh, piece of machinery. Again, aluminum coil. If I'm going to clean this coil, in a maintenance type situation, you will notice that when you pull the, the cover off of it, it's got a bluish tint. That's a hydrophilic material. People ask me, say, well, Fred, what does that mean? Basically, it, it is a, allowing the water in the summertime to quickly hurry and get off the coil. Um, uh, let's, let's call it Teflon coating if you don't mind. So what we want to do is never clean that coil with some acid type uh, material. When we, when we do that, we're going to wash away that hydrophilic material and basically it, it's not going to have any properties of, of that uh, quickly releasing the water and getting it into the drain pan. So um, very, very simple maintenance. Pull the, pull the blower out if you want to clean the coil. The blower will if you need to. Uh, clean the coil with some diluted uh, simple green uh, type material, non-acid uh, uh, coil cleaner, and water works really good with the brush and stuff. So very, very easy to maintain. Again, we are going to field install the heat strips if we need to. This particular machine already has a, the heat strips installed. That breaker would be uh, capable of turning off the power to the whole machine. Again, uh, 240 volt single phase uh, supply power for this particular air handler. So uh, multi-position, aluminum coil. A lot of people are loving that that particular coil comes with a TXV already installed, uh, saving, saving the contractors time and money out there on the install. So again, BVA 2.0 air handler. So we have our system powered up L1 and L2. We can see the display. Now let's look at the setup of our machine. SW4, four dip switches, SW1, SW number two. You need to read on the, in the manual whether SW4 number one and two need to be in a position. Chances are they're gonna to come to you in the off position, leave them there. SW4 number three and number four are installation switches. What I mean in there is that we can 
um, utilize these switches to control our unit to match up to your particular machine. You see, you can match this machine up to a high static or a high velocity piece of a system. You can match up this unit to an air handler that is doing zoning. When I'm doing those particular scenarios, SW4 number three is in the on position. And you say, well, Fred, how do I flip the switch? It is very, very easy to manipulate the switch, but when I flip the switch, that red LCD screen needs to be off. So we're going to power the unit off, flip the switch, turn the power back on. If you flip the switch with the power being on, the EEPROM chip is going to remember uh, what it was before you flipped the switch and not know what you have done. So SW43 allows us to allow this unit to uh, take a look at a different logic program uh, based off of a zoning package, based off of a, a uh, high static uh, piece of machinery inside. So um, SW44 is this. SW44 is looking at the logic based off of what it comes out of the box. And that logic on the indoor coil is a 47 degree saturation temperature number. When I want to take that, seven, that 47 degree number and I want to change that, I could take SW4 number four, move the switch, and that number goes from a 47 degree out of the box number to a 42 degree number. And all we're doing is we are allowing the machine to crank up just a little bit more capacity so that our coil temperature, the logic, the, 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 the way that we're going to uh, keep and control the comfort and load match is going to be 42 degrees. That's a summertime number. The wintertime number out of the box is, 40, uh, is, is 107. That 107 degree number goes to about 112, 114 in the wintertime. So again, out of the box, 47, 107. If I wanted to have a colder coil in the summertime, maybe more um, uh, humidity removal, if you don't mind. And if I wanted a warmer coil in the wintertime, turn the power off, flip SW44. Now I have a 42 degree and basically that 113 degree number. So again, SW44 has four different types of switches. Uh, some we are going to leave alone, some we're going to have the capability of, of moving back and forth. Now let's talk about SW5. SW5 has two switches on it, and it allows us to dial in our defrost wintertime scenario. If I wanted it to defrost basically in a time period of 10% less, I would SW5 number one. If I wanted to leave that defrost mechanism in for one more minute, SW5 number two. So SW5 is only uh, conducive in the wintertime in some, in some locations, SW5. There's the J2 switch. We talked about the capacity switch. It's going to come to you in the three three ton mode. It's going to come to you in the five ton mode. If we need to manipulate that for some reason, power off, flip the switch, make it a two ton, make it a four ton on the on that particular system. Over on the far right hand side are some black push button switches. Let's talk about the middle one and the one on the right. The one in the middle is my parameter switch. It is the one that I can push and it manipulates my unit into all of those parameters and, and, and what we're doing, what, what, uh, what's going on in the inside coal, how many volts are we doing, what's the last fault code, how many speeds, uh, what speed is my fan motor in. Again, that's, that is the parameter button. But I want to talk more about the one on the right hand side and it's called the force button. Your book, your IOM would tell you that you're going to install this in the wintertime. You're going to install it in the summertime. But in the summertime mode, I can run this machine for 20 minutes, push the force button. And when I push the force button, I am going to turn this machine into its 100% capacity. When I do that, it is going to run for two hours by itself. If I get done with all of my parameters and what I'm doing with the checking the subcooling and the superheat and getting my refrigerant dialed in, I can either satisfy the thermostat and it goes back to normal operation, or I can push the force button again and it goes back into normal operation. So that's the force button, and you can you can port, force it into 100% uh, mode, summertime or wintertime. 
But the other thing that it can do in the wintertime is if I push it and it's, it's ran basically uh, for 20 minutes or so and it's got a, a Hertz rating of above 30, I can push it for about eight seconds, six to eight seconds, and it will go into what is called a, a demand defrost. So I can force it into defrost, and when it, when it does that, we'll stop the fan motor, we'll reverse the reversing valve, uh, going back into normal operation, air conditioning mode if you don't mind, de-ice everything, but I can manually put it into uh, a, a defrost situation. So again, very, very simple uh, to understand what the board is doing, L1, L2 ground, that kind of scenario. So those are my setup points for the board. Very, very simple. Just take the book, go through the parameter buttons, uh, looking at that. And one more thing that I would like to show you is that if you had a chart that looked like this, you could see all of those parameters, you can see where T3, T5, T4 are located in the refrigerant circuit, and you would be able to dial in your commissioning. You could uh, dial in what the machine is doing voltage-wise, amp draw-wise, and basically get start a, a health program, if you don't mind, um, on this machine, uh, basically a baseline uh, type scenario. So again, that's the setup on the board.